a question came up about uh, <coughs> resonances. Um, <laughs> why don't we talk about resonances? Well, I, I wanted to uh, mention also why are we modeling infinite plate? There's no such thing as an infinite plate, right? Plates are finite in shape. Do you remember I mentioned the reason before? <laughs> you don't remember. <laughs> OK. Um, if instead of an infinite plate, if you have a finite plate, OK, <laughs> and somehow you're, radi you're exciting it, it vibrates. And uh, it radiates. Now, the radiation is not as simple as uh, in the case of infinite waves, infinite plates. The reason is radiation from here, okay, refracts to the other side and back and forth. And modeling these ends is very complicated. But uh, it is something that we will get to a little later. Secondly, uh, any vibration now is expressed in terms of uh, Fourier series. Okay. Now you have mode shapes, and uh, mode shapes depending on the boundary conditions, first mode, second mode, and so on. <laughs> You're only considering these, and if you look at let's say, a rectangular plate of, let's see, one, two, three, okay, this is, let's say, three, six mode, okay? And if you look at a cross-section, maybe it is like this in that way and so on. So at a given moment, The middle parts will act almost like the way an infinite plate would act. But the edges, there's, they, don't, they don't interact. There's nothing to interact on the other side. So the modeling of these will have to take, have uh, special conditions. And we will talk about it, uh, hopefully, a little later. <laughs> That's when you have resonances, etc and uh, that we have not talked about except for special resonance, okay? Boundary conditions become important, of course, both acoustically and as well as vibration, for vibration purposes. Okay, with that, let's uh, talk about radiation in spherical coordinates. As I mentioned, in the very first class, the, uh, the way we select the coordinate system depends on the shape of either the acoustic field or the shape of the sound source, okay? For plates, we use Cartesian coordinates, but not everything is flat, certainly not everything is infinite. Some things are either cylindrical in shape, like pipes, okay? Radiation from a pipe, <laughs> you'd use cylindrical coordinates, or they have the shape of a uh, spherical uh, geometry. Now, again, depending on the frequencies, sometimes, let's say, you have either an engine or a, pi a pump of some sort and that has a funny shape. It doesn't fit into any particular coordinates, okay? But at very low frequencies, for instance, this actually can act like a spherical source. So we can model it at low frequencies as a sphere and look at the vibration, uh, look at the radiation in all different directions. So the, the, we will, uh, after maybe a couple of lectures, we will go down to uh, simplifications about how you model simple systems as a monopulse, meaning something like a balloon, okay, that vibrates in and out, or a dipole, okay, one side, uh, there are two monopoles that are out of phase, etc. And uh, but just for some mathematical rigor, okay, we'll start with the most complicated, 
and then we'll simplify it. Most complicated meaning, we'll take the uh, uh, spherical radiation equations, uh, we'll go through the separation of variables, where you'll learn Legendre, you probably know these, but Legendre functions, Bessel functions, and so on, Hankel functions, okay? You know these? <laughs> yes, no, you've heard the names at least, okay? And, uh, and then use uh, very low order cases as examples. So with that, let me uh, begin with the uh, radiation from spheres. Okay, and uh, the starting point is the wave equation. And of course, wave equation, the Laplacian describes the uh, spatial component on the left and the uh, time variation on the right. Now, the Laplacian in explicit terms This is where one can make errors. Let's make sure we're okay. All right. I need to get you a figure on this. Careful here, this is phi, okay? The others are theta. I'll draw a figure later to describe each one of these. Now, we want to simplify this by substituting eta as cosine theta. So sine theta will be square root of 1 minus eta square. Now, we'll uh, 
use the usual solution, separation of variables. We're able to separate into four different components, three in spatial coordinates and time. If we substitute all these and simplify, We use this, so k here is omega over c. You can simplify this equation. Okay, just combining these. And uh, We set this to a constant since it depends. Yes. And uh, we also set one over phi. at these values. I substitute back.
Then we have C minus We rewrite them. All right, so we have one, two, three equations, differential equations in space, and we want to be able to solve these. You're familiar with these, right? You have seen them before somewhere. OK. Now, solutions. Of course, the first one is uh, fairly obvious. We're writing the general solution. So it would have an amplitude n. Note now this n here, okay, n here couples it to the other angle, 
okay? And you'll see that through C, it couples to this, okay? So this is A N uh, cosine N C plus B N sine N C. Now, it's fine, it's obvious, but there's a, uh, there are two conditions that you must remember. Phi is a variable between 0 and 2 pi. And the, for continuity, this must be an integer. OK, n must be an integer. That is of consequence because n appears in the other solution, OK? Now, if there is axial symmetry, okay, if there's a sphere and around its axis there's a symmetry, then n is zero because there's no variation around the angle. Okay? And when n is 0, this will simplify, and so on. OK. Now, let's, uh, we have these. Actually, let's do this. Let's solve the uh, next, the third set of equations. Legendre polynomials. Okay, now let's note that eta is same as uh, cosine theta. That means its values range between minus 1 and 1, because that by definition, okay? So that's that. Okay, so, and uh, C constant true for all values of eta. So first of all, let's see for the symmetric case, axis symmetric case, we can rewrite the uh, equation. We set P, the solution, to an arbitrary polynomial, A0, A1, eta, A2, eta squared, and so on. Just, uh, just an arbitrary polynomial. Then we can similarly determine its first and second derivatives, A1, 2, And then the second one, okay. Now, subst substituting these back into this equation, okay? We want to get some values for them. Leave it there. This, I guess. OK, 
okay, substituting back here, then we will get expressions that show a relationship between these coefficients. And then you substitute it back in here, you have C over 2. What we're trying to demonstrate here is that <laughs> a solution, you know, when you see um, an expression like this, let me just have you more, just a moment. When you see an expression like this, you know immediately what the solution looks like. What we're trying to demonstrate here is that when you have an equation like this, that it, okay, if you write the solution as an arbitrary power series, and then uh, substitute it back. What you then see is there's a relationship of recurrence, okay? Higher coefficients can be expressed in terms of the first uh, one or two, okay? And when you do that, now you're getting a solution that's uh, uh, more manageable. Uh, P, yes. Substituting then back into this, the pressure, uh, sorry, not pressure, but the uh, function, uh, Legendre function, we can write it in terms of A0 and A1. Because everything now can be expressed in terms of two coefficient, coefficients. Okay, once again, I don't want to uh, make too much of a case here, but you can see here the unknowns, coefficients A and B, which we're going to find out from various uh, boundary conditions. You can see here the unknowns, just one and two, okay? Because we were able to write all the higher coefficients in terms of a0 and A1, you can do this and you can demonstrate that. Okay, so we have this, and C of course is part of the uh, equation, and so that's, uh, <laughs> that gives another relationship to us. So, okay. When these two series are infinite, They diverge at eta plus minus one. Okay, remember they are they are valid up to uh, plus minus one. The uh, the range of validity because eta is cosine theta. Okay. Now, because Physically, pressure solutions uh, cannot be or must be finite. Must have finite amplitudes is better must have 
finite amplitudes. One should vanish and the other breaks at a finite number. i.e. c equals 0 or 6 or 20 etc. and this gives us a1 and c okay so the bottom line then is uh, I want to leave that there The allowed values we have are constant. Uh, C is m times m plus 1. And m can change from 0, 1 to integer values. So the solution then is the solution is obtained. by substituting for C in the equation of motion, in the wave equation. <clears throat> in this equation. Just very briefly, if I can have 10 seconds of your time, just very briefly. What we're saying here is that, fine, this is a series, but this series will diverge at plus or minus one values of eta. And so in order to be able to make this realistic, okay, we need to put a condition. And that condition comes uh, by assuming that pressure cannot be infinite physically, and that gives us or that helps us impose a value for C, the allowed values for C. And these are C, okay, integer values. And then you come back and put those in here, then you have an expression for P, the Legendre function. That's the process that we have followed. And when you do that, examples, M is equal to zero, Yes, of course, C will be zero, and the solution then one. That means completely symmetric. If M is equal to one, C will be equal to two, then and so on. So the general solution the Legendre equation is Certain properties you remember trigonometric functions have certain properties sine square theta plus cosine square theta is equal to one that's a property 
as an analogy, Legendre functions also have certain properties, and, and they are very similar to the uh, properties of Bessel functions. Okay, once again, uh, recurrence. Let me just uh, write a couple of them down. Here is Maybe one last one. All right. What this, this last condition shows, what would you call that? Do you remember? What does that condition refer to, the last one? What does it say? to finish writing and then let's talk about that last equation. Finish writing, everybody? Not yet? Okay. <laughs> Who can read this? Just read it. See what it says. Read it aloud. Yeah. What does it say? What's capital P? That's Legendre function. Okay. What does it do? Can you read it? John, why don't you read it? What what do you read there? On the left hand side. Okay, okay, what does that say then? What's P? What's PS and what's PM? Exactly, okay, and you're integrating it from minus one to one because they're valid between minus one and one, so the entire range of their validity. Okay, and what does the right hand side say? You're good at this, so continue. If their orders are equal, the integration is zero. If their orders are e uh, unequal, yes. So only when S and M, their orders are equal, it has a value, otherwise it's zero. And what is that condition called? What is this called then? Exactly orthogonality. So Legendre functions are orthogonal. Well, have you heard orthogonality before? No? Yes, maybe. What else is orthogonal? What, what other functions do you remember? 
that are orthogonal. Yes, uh, <laughs> sine, cosine functions are orthogonal functions. <laughs> yes, if you have sine n pi x multiplied by sine m pi x and integrated with respect to x from, let's say, uh, minus pi to plus pi, you'll have a very similar result. So. What is the uh, property of orthogonal functions? It's a very important tool. We use them to represent arbitrary functions by expanding them, okay? Just like Fourier series with Fourier fu uh, trigonometric functions, exponential functions, etc. So next time we come back, we'll be able to, <laughs> sorry, what this then will enable us to do is <clears throat> if we have a radiation pattern that's different. You know, in theta, one direction it's high, next to it it's low, all funny shaped. We'll be able to express it in terms of four, uh, Legendre functions. If it is completely, uh, let's say, symmetric, the result is going to come out to be finite only for S, M, zero, and so on, okay? And you, you, you'll find uh, Bessel functions should be the same and other functions <laughs> similar to this. As long as they're orthogonal, then you're able to express an arbitrary function in that variable uh, with these functions. Any questions? This is a different uh, approach to things. Uh, don't let it uh, get you scared. <laughs> but I, I think the, 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 these are good tools to have. And uh, when we start solving them, we will use, of course, the uh, for several modes, uh, others are can really be done effectively using numerical methods. Any questions on these? Okay, thank you. See you next time. <laughs>